Junior high and high school are, for many, the best years of an adolescent's life. During these impressionable years, children transform into young adults. Teens begin to form personal ideas and beliefs about the world around them based on experiences gained through social and the social and academic arena. Students are immersed in friendships, first loves, and extracurricular activities, as well as growing and learning experiences. As students travel the road of their edu educational careers, teachers begin to demand more work and no longer spoon-feed information to students. Rather, pupils are expected to work through the ideas with only guidance from instructors. As they advance in years of schooling, students are gradually given more freedom and responsibility in regards to the path their education will take. Along with the freedom that is gained, students are expected to be more active in their education by broadening their thoughts and ideas. Each year, students are exposed to more critical ideas through a broad array of literature that pushes their current boundaries of knowledge. This new knowledge is often informative information that parents consider inappropriate for their developing young adults to be exposed to. Because of this, parents have challenged numerous books that are found on the shelves of school libraries and that are taught in the classrooms. These unjustified challenges have resulted in school boards actually pulling selected books and materials from the library shelves and taking them out, out of an educational curriculum. These, the decision to censor the material that students have access to has caused an upset in parents, as well as other citizens, that feel that the young adult students should be allowed to explore mature situations through any type of literature. Though parents have a legitimate right to supervise any materials that their children are exposed to, this right does not extend the censorship to, to children of others. Parents must be cautious not to infringe the personal beliefs on whole school districts or communities. At times, the, protect, the protective instincts of parents can threaten the sanctity, the sanctity of the freedom of expression for those around them. Because parents often want to protect their children from the upsetting knowledge that comes with growing up, school children are kept from encountering new ideas and growing intellectually by not being allowed to read certain material. Parents have filled formal complaints with school boards in order to ensure that their children are not exposed to certain pieces of literature which contain information that is considered by parents to be inappropriate. The numerous books that parents have a problem with can be distinguished by the fact that all of these novels and writers cater to a young audience while at the same time tackling mature subject matter, found by a book in Band Part 2. While protecting one's offspring is a concern that anyone can understand, there is a fine line between protecting a child from harm and inhibiting a child's education. Parental concern is expected, but that concern should not completely shelter young adults from the world around them. Young adults have the right to be exposed to real-world situations so that they can begin to form opinions for themselves and ideas. Book banning violates the personal freedom that each American citizen is given by the Constitution. Therefore, the school board should, have, should revoke the decision to ban certain books from being used as educational sources. The First Amendment to the United States Constitution guarantees freedom of expression for every American citizen. This country is found on the belief that individuals have the right to express, express themselves in any way that they deem necessary, given that it doesn't physically harm others. The First Amendment states that the U.S. government cannot impede upon American citizens' freedom of speech or of the press. This idea allows individuals to express themselves through speech or writing, yet the freedom does not stop there. Lost in the shuffle is what the First Amendment actually stands for, that each individual is free to decide for themselves what to read and what to think. That's in Burton Part 5. The First Amendment implies that citizens have right to consume any work of literature that is produced. Without this underlying concept, the freedom to produce a work of ideas is worthless. The American Library Association's Intellectual Freedom Manual states that freedom to express oneself through a chosen mode of communication becomes virtually meaningless if access to that information is not protected. Therefore, the First Amendment is absolutely useless if parents and school boards are allowed to censor reading material. Intellectual freedom can only exist when two essential conditions are met the freedom to choose or the freedom to express one's opinion, even if that opinion may, might be considered unorthodox or unpopular, and those unorthodox or unpopular viewpoints are available to all who wish to read them. Without these crucial stip stipulations being enforced, America could no longer be called the land of the free. Literature, it is, it is unacceptable for a work to be censored because select citizens find the ideas articulated in the li literature to be different from their own personal views. This notion is conveyed to the court case, Texas versus Johnson, which found that 
If there is a bedrock principle underlying the First Amendment, it is that the government may not prohibit the expression of any idea simply because society finds the idea itself offensive or disagreeable. This ruling applies to all forms of government and extends to the public school system. Boards of education should not have the authority to censor works or literature simply because parents find them offensive.